Hello, hello, Sir David the Bard coming to you from Australia, Kangaroo City. And uh, we got a little snow and a little rain this morning. So anyway, the kangaroos are huddled around my front door. I can't get out, and it's a hell of a mess once the sun comes out. i got to go out and clean it up. Okay, okay. Now, those of you that said I should do this for money, <laughs> the hell with you. Money ain't nothing but problems. Problems. If you have enough to eat, get out of the rain, get your medication, have a little job, and you can buy a Big Mac, let it go. <laughs> let it go. You're happy. It is life. You don't need the house up on the hill. I don't need the house on the hill. I had a boat once <laughs> that I that I beached in the Pacific Ocean up on the beach. I got caught in a wave and I was like 16, 17 and trying to show the girls <laughs> how you do it. I'm there pushing that damn boat out trying to get through the breaker waves and uh, anyway, I don't need a boat. Yeah, I've had some cars. God, I've had uh, Cadillac. I've had Z28, two of those. And um, I've had uh, the Prius, you know, and the um, uh, RAV4 right now. And, um, God, I've had some fun cars. So you can spend a little on fun cars if you want. Um, if you have reasonable health. Now, you know I have diabetes. And when I sit here all day, which I do sometimes, <laughs> damn computer, me and the computer <laughs> is like me and the Mormon church, <laughs> except I win both times. Anyway, my foot swells up. Well, now, it doesn't hurt because I have neuropathy in that foot, but the left foot, shoe size is 12, <laughs> big foot. The right side is nine. Now <laughs> when I go in to the big box stores and I'm switching <laughs> shoes in the box, the cameras are looking at me. And when I walk out, hell, there's two black shoes. And the uh, clerk doesn't look at the, what size they are. So I, I bought two 12s and I kept walking out of one shoe. <laughs> on my right foot so you got to put Kleenex in there kind of like a bra to make it look like you know you're you're bigger and your bra will stay on uh, I don't wear a bra yet I need one <laughs> but I can't find one this big you know I've looked at DDD and <laughs> no there's no DDD anyway those of you that say I should uh, write a book. I'm trying to write a book right now. I, I started it yesterday and I have the first page. <laughs> anyway, what I thought about doing, which I think would be bitching, is to take a thousand of my videos and have them translated uh, <laughs> into Arabic. <laughs> I'll have no sales. I'll have it translated into Mormonism and uh, sell them for $199 a book. And each one will have uh, one video um, page that, uh, anyway, anyway, I don't want money. Let me tell you, I, there's nothing but trouble with money. Nothing but trouble with money. Most of us, if we get a little money, we spend it on stupid shit. <laughs> I bought a house once and the payment was 4000 a month. Let me tell you, you got to run hard for 4000 a month. That's before you eat, folks. If you get a little money, you buy stupid shit. And it shows that you've been poor and stupid. Well, been there, done that. Um, I've bought a lot of uh, stupid things over a lifetime. And right now, I have so many electronic bullshit things in my house. Let me tell you. I have my YouTube here and my webcam, which can do many, many things. Then I have my stereo system right here, and I listen to doo -wop. Now, Most of you don't even know what doo -wop is, but I do. So I listen to doo -wop all day. Then I have my electric fans in my face. I think I need an oxygen mask because I always have electric fans in my face. Anyway... 
Uh, I have fans here. I have fans in my room. And I have ceiling fans in every room. Now, I also have air purifiers, one up here in the basement and one in my room. Now, in my room, I have an intercom system that goes to every room. So no kid can hide from me. When I push the intercom, it's heard throughout the house and the patio. I have chandeliers everywhere that dim, and it pisses me off that they get dirty. <laughs> I have an alarm system, and if the front door opens, it tells me the front door just opened. Uh, it doesn't say Bigfoot just came in. That I have to go to my first video camera system, the living room, and it shows Bigfoot <laughs> coming in. Oh, hell! Now I'm up here in, uh, well, I'm down here in the basement, but up here in the hall, and I have an access camera system, and I can look down and see the living room. So when Allison's <laughs> sucking her bears in and making a mess in the living room, uh, I can uh, get her. My uh, video or my audio system, alarm system, tells me when the patio door is open, the front door is open, the kids' window is open, and the um, uh, master bedroom window is open. I have three smoke detectors. One is electric, one is a special battery, and one is just a nine volt battery. Okay, so um, they're connected to the alarm system. Then I have a breakage glass <laughs> monitor. So if the Danites break a window to get in my house, it phones the security company. Now, I have, <laughs> when I say this shit, I start to think I'm mentally ill. I really need to be in an institution. Now, I have a hall monitor. Because the damn kids, they come out of their bedroom and they crawl like snakes. <laughs> they know where the cameras can't see. And I, so I fooled them. So I put this hall monitor in, which is radar. And when the kid is crawling or flying or whatever, it takes that whole hall in. And it rings. It rings. Now, I have a phone answering service <laughs> that I built. And it says um, all of these calls coming in or out of this telephone number are being recorded. Now I have up on my computer voice recognition. I also have magnification. What needs to be magnified? Well, <laughs> I found a few things. <laughs> so magnification is on there. Now when someone leaves a message, then the phone beeps a certain way. When someone walks in the living room, one camera system beeps a certain way and so the sounds of my home I can tell where the hell people are and what they're doing now I'm not paranoid I'm not paranoid <laughs> now I went into the uh, oh I have toilets that you can flush a car down I have those special toilets that kids can't throw toys into or themselves and when I push the handle the kid goes right down the sewer uh, anyway, I went into the, uh, the guest room here in the basement, and uh, it had a ceiling fan. Well, the ceiling fan is still there, but the fan doesn't go around. The light comes on. I think it needs a switch. Anyway, every damn day, I'm working on <laughs> some electronic thing and swearing my ass off going, Humans, they can't make anything right. So, um, I also have in my room... Uh, Netflix with a computer down below, and then I also have a TV upstairs that goes through all the cable channels, and I have sitting next to my chair microphone headphones, so I can pull one headphone up and listen to Allison read, but I don't miss any of the action. I hear it in the other ear, and when Mercy goes to bed, I pull both of them down and uh, can watch my TV. Now, my jacuzzi, <laughs> shit, it has two faucets in. It has a Roman faucet in, which pours water into that jacuzzi. It fills a 45 or 50 gallon, it might be more than that, 60 or 70 gallon jacuzzi in about four minutes. Then I have an overhead shower that I can turn on, and it's right beside me there, and I can adjust the, the temperature, and then it has the jacuzzi button. So I'm sitting there in a rainforest, and I have <laughs> that shit. Uh, 
a little bird quacker machine and it's the birds are going beep 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 like I'm in the jungle and I fantasize I'm uh, in the jungle I'm in a rain forest jungle uh, so anyway um, God if you're happy you're happy I don't need more the Mormons can't offer me more their celestial kingdom can't be this nice it can't be I've got rivers out front and trees and ponds and birds and uh, it's safe there's no no graffiti and close to schools I have two new cars what can the Mormons offer me? 71 virgins? I've had 71 virgins. It ain't that good. I don't want to be with my family forever. I just want to get through this life with my family. So, oh, I forgot. <laughs> my karaoke machine and my microphone for the karaoke. If the, the Netflix isn't loud enough, I put the karaoke mic down and uh, boy it sounds uh, like a, a surround sound in here and I sang a couple of songs on there but I don't dare post them I'm afraid I'll lose subscribers in the hundreds anyway I have a memory system down here for one camera system the other cameras are totally independent so if one fails the other one is recording automatically this one here has two trillion <laughs> kilobytes Yes, you heard me. Two trillion. So, what is the Mormon Church going to offer me? I have all you wonderful people out there that look at me now and then, and maybe now and then I give you a smile or a laugh. I love that. I love it when uh, people write into me and say, you know, I'm laughing my ass off. There's a lot of assless people out there. So, anyway, um,. The Mormon Church doesn't have anything to offer me. And you know what? I don't pay any tithing. And I'm healthy. Yeah, I'm bipolar. I was born that way. The, the Mormon priesthood isn't going to fix that. If the Mormon priesthood could fix bipolar, they'd resurrect all the missionaries this year that died. Ten missionaries from January 1. The, the, the other mission, uh, would, the missionary companion would run over and go, You become alive again. Your head is attached in the name of Jesus. And the head falls off again. <laughs> that power. <laughs> it's the penis hood. That's what has power. Well, if you're young. <laughs> if you're old, you don't have the priesthood, the penishood. <laughs> you just got a shit. A YouTube show that draws mentally ill, handicapped, <laughs> losers. <laughs> Put your own category on your own self. So, let me tell you one thing that happened today and um, I'm nervous. Allison came to me and um, Allison is tricky. God damn. She's the trickiest, smartest, most compassionate, sweetest child I've ever had. And she said, Dad, on Friday can I have a play day? I said, well, that seems reasonable. You've done your homework and you've cleaned the house. You've taken care of me. Uh, and oh my god that's a big job food medications uh, it, it socks it just goes on and on but anyway she's a wonderful little girl so I said well yeah you can have a play day she says well it's with my friend uh, Ashley and I said okay you can uh, you know be with Ashley and then she said she's in my class well, well that's good she has a friend at school and then she says also in my primary class okay now I wet my pants and uh, I should start wearing adult diapers because she's getting bigger and she's getting more like a woman. She's been wearing a training bra for eight months and it's starting to train. <laughs> so anyway, I said, well, what is the play date? You just going over to your friend's house and uh, playing? She says, well, yes, but we're also going and putting some scrapbooks together. I said, well, where are you going to do that? It's raining. She says, oh, over at the Mormon church. Now, folks, let me tell you, this is hard. This is hard. That is full of sarin gas over there for every human that goes over. But, God, when you're six, seven, five, 
10 and they give you cupcakes, they take you places, they're laughing, it's baseball, it's soccer. God, it's constant activity. Well, that's training for a cult. She doesn't see that. She doesn't see that. So I have to give her the old speech about Joseph Smith that uh, my girl Abigail would have had her one year anniversary marriage. <laughs> She's 15. And uh, the, the church, Mormon church, has changed the birthdays of um, Helen Marr Kimball and, uh, and Nancy Winchester from 14 to 19. And when I'm dead and the rest of you are dead, the kids are going to believe that. That was their, um, their pedophile is not a pedophile anymore, but he always was. So, do I let her go? Do I not let her go? Do I practice free agency? Do I have a responsibility to protect her? Do I have a responsibility to let her be social? We're living mostly here in Australia in a Mormon uh, community. Most of the uh, kangaroos uh, attend the Mormon church. <laughs> and the other fools attend the Mormon church. The idiots, the pedophiles. <laughs> The, the people with absolutely no motivation, they're all members of the Mormon church. So Allison doesn't have a big choice, you know. It's dance with a kangaroo or don't dance. So, God, it was hard. It was hard. I wet my pants a second time when I said, let me call the mother. Now, usually, <laughs> my personality on a telephone or in person can be, well, some say abusive. Some say abrasive. Some say asshole. I can't tell you the rest of them because they start with letters that I'm not allowed to use here on uh, F-Tube. <laughs> so anyway, I call the mom, and it's the typical Molly Mormon. And I said, listen, I said, uh, Allison seems to like your little girl and wants to be friends with her. And I just want to make sure when Allison goes to someone's house that I talk to the parents I know where she is, the phone number, and the address. Oh, I'm so happy you called. And I said, well, don't make that decision too soon. <laughs> what do you mean? I said, well, let me tell you what I mean. I said, our family are atheists. And um, I expect you to respect my religion if I'm going to let my little girl uh, be with your girl, who we will respect your religion. But here are the rules. Number one, my child is not a prospective member. If the missionaries show up and talk to her and or they come to my door, the friendship with your daughter has gone down the poop chute. It's gone. Oh, oh. So I said, now let me tell you something else. My daughter doesn't pray in your church. She's not a member, nor will she be. Uh, unless she turns 18, then she can be, but she's not going to be baptized in your church. Oh, oh, I said, oh, oh, yourself. I said, now, I was a member of your church for about 55 years. And I'm going to go to my daughter's wedding. Do you understand? Yes, yes, you must have had some problems. I said, no, I didn't have any problems. Your church had problems. I resigned. I'm not excommunicated. Now I want my daughter not to be around smoking and drinking and drugs. Atheists can do that, too. And I want to make sure that none of your people ask her to bear a testimony or give a prayer. All right, I will call and make sure they know. <laughs> well, I think between the lines she was saying, I'll call and let them know that dad is a real asshole. He hates the Mormon church. He's an apostate. You do anything to that child, he'll sue you and sue you and sue you. I said, all right. As long as they're friends and their friendship is based upon their personalities, not their religion, I'm going to let her go. I have my reservations because I've dealt with you people before. But I'm going to give you a chance. Oh, okay, okay. So <laughs> I hung up and I went in pants a third time. So I told Allison the old uh, atheist story. <laughs> The atheist story is when there was no Adam, there was no Eve, and Jesus is the figment of everyone's imagination. Mohammed, <laughs> if you say his name, they will kill you. So anyway, I gave her the, the, the spiel, don't let missionaries talk to you, they're child molesters, and uh, just enjoy the activity and get the hell away from the people. So she said, okay. 
And uh, so anyway, um, I let her go. I let her go. Damn. You know, what do you do as a father? What do you do? You want to let your children um, have religious freedom. Um, but I don't want that cult freedom on her. But those are the, the, the friends. When she goes to school, the kids are all Mormons. When she goes to any activity in the community, she sees her friends and they're all Mormons. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? So I'm doing the best I can. I don't know if it's the right thing or the wrong thing, but I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. If she joins the Mormon church and I am banned from her wedding, like the Mormon church does all the time to parents, um, the Mormon church is not going to win. I'm not going to go uh, any further than that okay because uh, you know because because I am going to Allison's wedding now those temple doors are not locked <laughs> you can walk in <laughs> and if you're disabled you can say I'm disabled I'm walking in <laughs> so anyway uh, I am going to her wedding the rest of uh, eight of my kids shunned me eight of them got married and I wasn't allowed to go and, uh, oh, the Mormons say, that's your fault because you didn't pay for the City Creek Mall with your tithing. And I said, well, I don't buy malls. You guys buy them. I raised the child, and I have a right to go to her wedding. So, anyway, I don't want this video to be too long. Um, I don't have anything else to say. <laughs> My mind ran out. <laughs>